Hi, everyone. How is everyone doing on this lovely Sunday? Hopefully good. I'm sure you're all um, anxiously awaiting our Zoom call. So we are excited to have you with us today. You'll see a few of us on this call. We, we outnumber you a little bit. Um, but when you bring three departments together, I think it's, it's a good thing um, to see a good representation from all the faculty. And we also have students with us. So each major is represented by um, one or two faculty members and then um, a student within that discipline. So you'll get to ask them questions. We have an admissions rep on the, on the call too. And so he will monitor the chat. So if you wanna you know, post any questions as we roll along, we'll have some time at the end to definitely answer those. So um, please don't be shy in that regard and, and make sure again that we that we get everything um, answered and and you know feel that that you're that you're getting everything you want out of tonight. So we're excited to be with you tonight. This is something that we've done a little bit in the past, but is uh, fairly new to us as well. And and definitely with bringing all of these majors together, I think it's a pretty unique opportunity for us. And so um, we are going to talk about really the healthcare professional field um, and, and career exploration from a lot of different majors. So um, we'll kind of each have our own little spiel, have a student talk, and then we'll move to the next one. And so again, at any point, feel free to, to of course, unmute or to you know put something in the chat. Um, that would be great. So you're going to be hearing from health and exercise science first. Then you're going to um, hear from people in health services leadership and then biology and neuroscience. So we'll kind of move along here. So I'm Nikki Whalen. I'm the department chair for the sports science and health education department, and I personally teach um, within the health and exercise science major and minor. And then I'll let Katie introduce herself. Hey, everybody. My name is Katie Smith. I joined Nikki in the health and exercise science major as well. I am an exercise physiologist and a registered dietitian. So those are primarily the emphases that I bring into our coursework for this major. And we're very lucky to have a, a dietitian um, as that's a really up and coming area and, and a lot of people are really wanting to pursue that um, as it, it's going into a master's degree. And then Delaney Reese is our student with us. So Delaney, if you wanna introduce yourself and where you're from. Hi, um, I'm Delaney Reese. I am a junior here at Simpson and I'm from Anamosa, Iowa. So in like little north of Cedar Rapids. Perfect, well, thank you. And again, you have an opportunity, you'll hear from Delaney here shortly. So, um, so I'll start off with just generally, you know, with a lot of our majors, um, but in particular with the health and exercise science, what you want to do with the major, right? And so, so many of these areas that you're interested in going into, um, you know, can, can be attacked from various disciplines. And so it's really about finding what is a good fit for you and what you're passionate about. Um, something in our major in particular that, that we see, and um, we see really all, all of these majors um, or all these areas and careers are, are being um, approached from our major, but physical and occupational therapy is a very big one for us. So students going into that area will, will um, potentially, of course, do health and exercise science and then go on to that um, graduate program. Um, many of our students will go to be a chiropractor. And again, that takes additional schooling after. So that's what this asterisk is next to each of these um, career fields. Um, some go into research. And so there's, there's many opportunities with research that, that you may want to explore. Um, dietitian, as I said, that's that's changing into a master's degree here very soon. And so um, you can do your degree at Simpson and then go on um, into dietetics. And again, having um, Dr. Smith with us, she can guide you along that path very, very well. Certified athletic trainer. Some of you may know that athletic training also shifted to a master's degree uh, a few years ago. And um, as far as how we kind of get there now, again, is, is through an undergraduate degree um, at Simpson, and then you move on to a master's degree in athletic training. And then we have others who go into what we consider, um, you know, the, the physician's assistant clinical route, which can be an MD, a DO, um, nursing. And these are some we particularly share with neuroscience and biology as well. So you can, again, kind of attack these from whatever major speaks to you best. Um, and, and in particular, what we bring to that, even if we collaborate with other departments, which we do often, um, is really an exercises medicine um, 
piece to it. And so this is something that our discipline has really brought to the table. Um, it is something that our certifications will continue to push and, and, and help people recognize how much exercise um, and nutrition can help in all facets of health. And um, cardiac rehab is another area that many of our students go into. So that would be working with heart patients and pulmonary patients in a hospital setting. Um, and then of course we have health coaching, corporate wellness, um, amongst other things, strength and conditioning and that type of thing. But we'll kind of keep it towards the, the clinical and health side of things for tonight, since that's what um, really our focus is. So how we have our major set up is um, basically so that you get choices. So we have redefined and, and redesigned the major um, starting last year. And so we've, we've interviewed a lot of people in the industry. We've uh, talked with some graduate programs and we've really felt like um, we can best serve our students by allowing you kind of a core component of, of classes along with choices within each area. So essentially, if you tell us, hey, I'm interested in physical therapy, we're you know, very familiar with what is needed in that graduate program. Program. And so we'll help guide you um, within each area of the major. But these listed on this page here are just the general areas that you'll get to choose from. So we, we cover everything um, with human body structure and function. We definitely, of course, uh, talk and, and offer a nutrition course, which is part of our core curriculum. Um, if you are interested in that physical therapy, occupational therapy, therapy, rehab sciences, then we go very much into injury prevention and how to diagnose and rehabilitate injuries. Um, and we also hit, you know, it's great to know everything there is to know in the textbook about the human body, but we know it's, it's much more than that. And so we talk a lot about health promotion and behavior modification. And so within um, behavior modification specifically, it's, you know, how do you motivate people to show up to rehab? How do you motivate people to, to quit smoking? And so it's so much beyond just the, the cells and so much beyond just the bones and muscles. So we try to, to hit upon that. Um, and then of course, strength and conditioning, which can serve all disciplines well, not just those who want to go into strength and conditioning um, as a career. And then generally, again, health and wellness and, and uh, assessment and exercise prescription. And, and Katie can, can talk a little bit more about that here shortly too, but, but we give you the tools to assess those who, um, uh, you know, we can go everything through their, their medical history. We teach you how to take a, a solid medical history, look at any medications they might be on and how to design a proper exercise program with all of those pieces in mind. So from there, um, we also hit heavily upon internships and research in our major. Um, and so this is something that internships are required um, and research is optional, but of course, highly recommended, especially for those going into the clinical path. So we've had a variety of internships, as you can imagine, um, some that stay local, you know, of course we are only what, 20 minutes from Des Moines. And so it's very, very easy to um, access Des Moines for internship opportunities. So we're very blessed in that regard. We have some in Indianola, of course. Um, and then we have some that go what I consider, you know, PR heavy. So this might be, you know, with the Vikings. Um, we've had somebody with the Olympic Training Center. We have had um, the Katie's done one when she was a student um, with the White House Athletic Center. Um, so it's a variety of opportunities that if you want to go far and do something that that again is is been a dream of yours, we absolutely want to help you succeed in that. If you want to stay local um, because maybe you're an athlete or it's a little bit harder for you to get away, that's great too. So we have a variety of opportunities here. So everything from um, personal health uh, and wellness. We have, of course, Mercy and, and various hospitals in Des Moines. Um, maybe you wanna do something that is public health related, which also would collaborate with um, Dr. Downey's major that she'll talk about here shortly. Um, so quite a few opportunities for you to really get your feet wet. And we love our classes and we know how great they are, but at the same time, we also are very, uh, we very much understand that a ton of learning happens outside the classroom. So we wanna set you up for that as well. Katie, do you want to talk a little bit about the, we, I, I kept this internship spotlight in, although it's not clinical, but maybe a little bit about our internships and because it's they've only heard from me so far. Absolutely. So as Dickie said, um, one of the big things with our major as health and exercise science is that it's very hands-on um, because you're entering the field most likely because you want to work with people and you enjoy working with people. And so one of the best ways that we feel that we can prepare you for that is to allow you the opportunity to be able to do so both in the classroom, but then also in the practical setting with internships. So one example of an internship story that we like to share um, is our student Jacob here, 
who interned with Hy-Vee Kids Fit. So this would be kind of a, a combination of the health promotion, but also a little bit of clinical because they're trying to do, they're implementing healthy habits and behaviors starting with childhood age. And so they're going out into the schools and they're doing activities, um, both exercise and nutrition based in the schools. And he had the opportunity to travel all over Iowa to be able to do that and then actually turned into a job for him as well. And so undergraduate research, again, is another opportunity um, that students have at Simpson. Actually, I will say that, um, well, three out of the four faculty on the call tonight are an alum. And when I was a student here, research has really grown um, since the time that I graduated it, um, in terms of what we are able to do. And it's really unique for an institution our size. So research can look a variety of different things. It's not the same. Um, it's very different depending upon the discipline that you're in. It's going to be different for Dr. Doling in microbiology than it is for us um, in health and exercise science and what it is in public health as well. So the picture that you see here are three of our students um, that chose to do for their capstone senior project research together. And so they looked at first year college students and then they compared lifestyle habits the beginning of their year and then at the end of their first year of college just to kind of see if that transition really changed anything for them in terms of food consumption um, and anthropometric data. So they looked at height and weight and body composition and then their resting metabolic rate as well. So they had the opportunity to be able to design the study, to put that through, to get approval um, from a committee on campus, to be able to recruit the participants, to collect the data, to analyze the data. And then we have an entire day at the end of this um, of the year, usually in April, where we have a research symposium. And so that's where you see these students presenting. It's very similar to a professional research conference. Um, and that's something that all of our departments on campus do a really good job of connecting you and getting you used to your professional organizations. Because at some point, your textbook is going to be out of date if it's not already, um, because research sometimes lags behind the publication process. And so your faculty at Simpson spend a lot of time making sure that you are getting the most up-to-date information in the field. Um, and so we have an opportunity to be able to share that on campus. So um, you can do research in a group or you can do it individually. And so like the picture here in the middle is Ashley Litterer who just graduated about a year ago now. Um, and she is now in nursing school at Allen College. And she was a health and exercise science major with the biology minor. And she has goals to be a midwife. And so with her independent capstone, um, she actually submitted that to an international conference on maternal and child health. And it was right at a year ago that she was at this picture. This was actually in Portugal. So she was accepted to present her research overseas. And that was really exciting to be able to accompany her and represent Simpson in an international setting. The other two pictures are examples of that research um, symposium day that we have in the spring. And as I mentioned, we really value our relationships with our professional organizations because that's where you are going to turn to in the future to receive your continuing education, which if you stay in healthcare becomes incredibly important. And so our students have had the opportunity through clubs and through involvement in our major to be able to travel to American College of Sports Medicine in Washington, D.C. and Chicago. It's the group on the right here. And then also the Midwest um, Athletic Trainers Association Conference um, usually in Omaha, or they've been down to Oklahoma as well. So it's a great opportunity to network, um, to take classes, and to hear the latest research from the people that are actually doing the research, which in our field is oftentimes also the authors of your textbook, which is pretty cool. A couple other pictures here. Um, again, our major, because it is exercise is medicine, so they're usually taking workouts um, from world-renowned fitness instructors. This guy right here actually might look familiar to you if you're a Today Show fan. Um, Dr. Jordan Metzl actually does a lot of the workouts on the Today Show regularly, and so he was a keynote speaker, and we were able to do a workout with him, and then to get a team picture afterwards, so that was really fun. And our students, we think they're great, but so do the professional organizations as well, which is pretty fun. So a graduate, Jacob Becker, here was actually recognized um, by the American College of Sports Medicine a year ago when we were out in Washington, D.C. or Chicago. Um, and he, they give out one award every year to an undergraduate student that has really done a great job of taking the field forward for what you can do at an undergraduate level. So he went to the conference one year and he learned how to be able to create a walking class and make that high intensity to fit with high intensity interval training. 
He brought that back to campus and created a walking club, which was really successful for quite a while while he was at Simpson. Um, and they, and then he was recognized the following year at the conference for this. He received a thousand dollar award, but he also received a free voucher to be able to take his certification exam, which is usually somewhere between three hundred and four hundred dollars. So he became a certified um, exercise physiologist at no cost to him for part of that award. So that was really fun to be able to see. And I mentioned clubs as well. And so our clubs do a, a variety of um, involvement on campus, but also community service. So the village is a retirement community. They have everything from full care to assisted living um, to independent living. And so our students will go and volunteer there, but they also will do internships there. So they'll teach exercise classes. They'll be able to do fitness assessments with those individuals. Um, coordinate activities and senior living, which has actually been a growing popular job post-graduation for some of our students in the major um, who are actually becoming wellness coordinators at long-term care facilities. And the picture on the right-hand side is a group from our health promotion class that Nikki was talking about, where they identified a need on campus to be able to help instruct women and in increase their confidence in terms of weightlifting. And so they created a weightlifting 101 just for women and advertised that class and then instructed them as they came to that session. So mental health fair, this is something else that our that our club has gotten involved in. And so our club has is, is really done a great job over the years of really growing and it's student ran club. And so there was a mental health fair and, and they wanted to be part of that as well. And so it, they took a piece of um, what they learn in class and, and they know how much exercise and, um, and really nutrition, of course, and, and gut connection influences mental health. So anxiety and depression. And so they had, they supported a table and, and wanted to hand out information to um, local students. So that was, that was a lot of fun for them as well. So another thing that they um, did at the conference was they connected with this individual, if you recognize him from Dancing with the Stars, if you are a fan, um, he was actually there leading group workouts. And one of the things that we really promote is that exercise doesn't have to be in the weight room. Um, it doesn't have to be in the fitness center, really moving your way and just getting up and moving, period, is really beneficial to health. And so one of the things that the students did um, take a, an exercise class with him, but then they brought that back to campus to be able to do a campus-wide workout live with Louie on, um, online during finals week. So it's just kind of a way to be able to break up the stress of finals week and bring campus together to incre increase physical, but then also that mental health that we just talked about too. And there was lots of staff and faculty there too. So I think it was a lot of fun. I think the students were surprised to see everybody there, but that was a, that was a lot of fun as well. It was fun. So one more opportunity that we have for you among many at Simpson that I'll speak to, and then I'll turn it over to our um, co-department colleagues. This is an honors program. And so you might recognize the term an honors program for other institutions that you're looking at. Honors programs are an opportunity for the highest achieving students on campus to be able to excel as a group. So it's a way to be able to get like-minded folks that are all very motivated working towards the same goal. Um, and that is to do well in the classes that they're in. So unlike many honors programs at other institutions, institutions where the classes are the same as what the non-honor students take. They're just honor students together. So say, for example, Biology 101, and then an honor section of Biology 101. Our program is not at all like that. Um, our program, the courses are uniquely designed for the program itself. And our program is really built on interdisciplinary learning. So you're coming to a liberal arts institution when you choose Simpson College, which means that you're really going to be grounded in a variety of different fields. But then when you take part in the honors program, you are taking classes that really think about what are questions that are going on in the big surrounding world um, that we live in and how can we tackle them for many different disciplines. So maybe that is the one course being taught by faculty from two different directions, or maybe that's a course that is looking at one question from a variety of different angles. Um, the, the picture that you see on the left hand side was from a course that was called Health at Every Size that I taught. And so we started out really defining what's the clinical definition of health and how's that currently answered or defined in the clinical setting and what's perhaps wrong about that, but why is it continually done that way? And really how should we better define health? And so the whole goal of the course was not only to be able to understand um, the flaws and how we could improve the definition of health, but then really how has society impacted that definition of health? 
And we need to do more for appreciation for bodies in every shape and size, and that health really can come in all shapes and sizes. So at the end of the semester, the students worked on with an art instructor, um, which is not me, because that's not my area, but this is an example of interdisciplinary learning of how to draw the human figure. And so they created a final project where they were able to present their art work at the symposium day at the end of the semester. And Dr. Downey is also teaching a course this semester in the honors program. So she might be able to elaborate a little bit on that later on. And that one has to do with mental health. Um, I wanna take a minute here, put the, I, you know, put up all of our social stuff um, on the screen here. So if you have a minute and you wanna write that down, that would be awesome. We'd love to have you follow us. We try to post a lot of information here, but I also wanna take a minute for Delaney to be able to speak really to her experiences at Simpson um, and what it's like in our major. And, and then of course, hopefully there'll be some questions coming up at the end as well. But after Delaney's done, then we'll shift to the health services leadership. Um, as I said earlier, I am a junior here at Simpson. Um, when I was looking at schools, when I was in high school, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to be a physician assistant. So I knew that going to PA school was going to be my end goal, but I wanted to get my, do my undergrad in athletic training because I had a interest in sports medicine. And I knew that I would like the hands-on, um, in addition to taking the biology classes, um, so I was looking at schools for athletic training. And when I was in early on in my high school career, they decided to shift towards a master's program. So when I was looking, I realized that the likelihood of finding a school that still had an athletic training program as an undergrad was, tr was tricky. So when I came to Simpson on a visit and was told that they were being very um, proactive about the shift change and they had a plan for how what that was going to look like um, and they were kind of revamping the program itself it really was it really stuck out to me um, compared to the other schools that I went to even like at Iowa State they had no idea what their program was going to look like so um, that was kind of the program itself was part of the reason, a good reason why I came to Simpson. And for me, I just love that it's so versatile and I can pick and choose what classes I take to tailor towards going to PA school. But I have a lot of friends who are want to go to PT school or want to go to OT school and they can kind of take similar, but also a little bit different avenues depending on what they want to do. Um, another thing that's really neat is even though I knew what I wanted to do when I started at Simpson, the versatility of our program makes it easier for if you don't know what you want to do. And so because you take some core classes that like the for your first two years, especially, it doesn't really matter if you change your idea on what you want to do because you still have taken those classes that are still going to go towards your major. And so then you can kind of figure out which classes you want to pick and choose from. Um, I like I said, I really love this program, every class I take, um, I it makes me think that I wish um, other people could come and see the program because I love it and I learn so much and it's such a good complement to my classes in the biology um, department, especially. And I think that it'll really set me apart going to PA school and um, give me a lot of background and foundation for um, lots of things, but especially the exercises medicine component. Awesome. Thank you, Delaney. And again, please, um, you know, put a question in the chat or we'll take some time at the end and, and you definitely can ask Delaney. I mean, you can pop on now if you'd like um, as we're shifting gears, but well, that's it from the health and exercise science side. As I said, I'm going to stop sharing here for a moment um, and let Dr. Downey pull up hers. So my name is JC Downey. And first of all, I just have to say that I had an odd smile on my face for that whole um, introduction because I really just appreciate how um, well Simpson prepares future healthcare professionals for the field and really helps them find their way. So um, good job, health and exercise science. That was fun to learn about. Um, I'm going to shift a little bit and talk about health services leadership. And it's a program one, probably unlike what you've heard of before, if you've done a little bit of college shopping, you won't see uh, much like this at the undergraduate level. It is uh, about healthcare, but oftentimes, um, 
students that think that they might want to go to college and end up being the physical therapist or PA or, or physician find that when they have maybe their first lab class or maybe their first job shadowing experience, that that might not be for them. Um, but they still like the idea of helping people and they still want to work in the healthcare environment, but they want to do it maybe in a more of a supportive or administrative sort of way. And so uh, that's in a nutshell is health services leadership. And I'm going to talk a little bit more and Emily will help me here um, as well, talk a little bit more about the program, but uh, you won't find it at a lot of other undergraduate colleges. So we are going to spend a couple minutes talking through um, a bit of the, the type of coursework. And I think that will help you um, understand what we're talking about here. So we do have a major and a minor. And by the way, we go by HSL because it's a mouthful for health services leadership. So HSL is what we shorten it to. Oops, skipped one. All right. So um, took a quote from some of our marketing material. It just says that, you know, the health services industry needs smart and capable leaders and that you can be one and that you can start it at Simpson. And the reason why I shared that quote is because it, it helps me be able to introduce the idea of why we have a program like this at the undergraduate level. You know, we went on and on about how unique it is. And we'll tell you why um, we build it was because there are jobs in the field <laughs> that need um, capable and smart leaders to be able to um, meet the needs of, a, of our growing and aging population. And we find that um, there aren't very many undergraduate programs that prepare students for healthcare. So they get into healthcare, um, but they don't really, their learning curve is so steep that we recognize that with all the job needs and all the opportunities out there, if we were to help um, introduce students to the administrative side of healthcare, that we can then be able to prepare them to be off and running once they graduate. And so we like that idea of leaders. You know, we want you to be able to come in and, and identify um, areas for improvement and, um, you know, plan and be strategic about how to utilize resources to meet needs and things that are businessy, but also um, very much directed at helping people um, have healthier and more meaningful lives. So we built this program with the help of professionals in the field, um, actually have an advisory board and we have some partner programs. So the point of that is saying uh, that the need for an undergraduate major like this was, was very obvious to those who are currently working in the field. They said, we do need undergrads that are studying in this area. We don't wanna wait until you're graduated and then do all the training. We wanna be able to help you become trained so that when you graduate, you're ready to step right into these jobs and then you know, make your way um, up that career ladder um, more quickly because definitely we need trained individuals. So we have this advisory board and I have a list here of our, our partners and advisory board. Just um, mainly what I want you to notice is just the types of fields and industries they come from. So it's a wide variety. Um, there, as was mentioned, we definitely have an aging population that are gonna need a lot of healthcare um, and so we have representation from long-term care facilities and senior living communities. We also have some representation from different types of organizations that you might not be thinking about, but might really spark your interest. Um, for example, um, CareView Communications, there's at uh, the heart of that organization is IT and healthcare. And so IT, of course, is just growing in all fields. Why not healthcare? So we're, uh, we have an, one of our um, advisory board members is, owns a large organization there. And then we have some that look a little bit more like maybe some places you'll see around home. So there's like Mercy Clinics, um, YMCA. Um, there's some um, human resources in healthcare because there is so much job growth in healthcare, human resources and attracting and maintaining high quality employees and continuing to educate them is a really big deal because we do want our healthcare professionals to be at the top of their game. And so that's an organization that's on board with us too, as well as, as you can see at the bottom, Walmart, Brew Cross and Brew Shield. So the managed care and health insurance um, industry is a big part of, we've got to pay for healthcare as well. So just wanted to share a little bit of who's um, helping direct this program. And so that we are very much um, answering the needs of healthcare in the moment, trying to stay very up and current. Again, when we try to talk about what is health services leadership, sometimes it helps to talk about where you might be employed. And so when Katie and Nikki were talking about some of the positions that their students are going for, or a lot of them were based upon more school, uh, more um, graduate school. And so in health services leadership, you don't necessarily have to have a graduate degree, although students might end up getting a master's in healthcare administration at some point, but they don't necessarily have to have that right after graduation. But there are many jobs that they can apply for in these types of organizations right after graduation. So you might work in a hospital and in a really big health system or in a small county hospital where you'll wear a lot of hats and do a lot of jobs. And so the idea being that we try to train students so that they are 
um, introduced to a lot of the areas. So that's whether it be finance or quality improvement, um, wide variety of areas they need to understand. Uh, and then you can see the rehab centers and behavioral health, um, the senior living and long-term care facilities, outpatient surgery centers are a growing area, wellness centers, public health, um, and as you'll see on and on there, um, biotech, um, again, with tech, tech and healthcare is such a big deal. So we're seeing some students land in those areas as well. Just wanted to show a few pictures. I won't go um, on too long. I wanna make sure we have time for questions, but these are a few pictures from one of the classes that we teach where students get to go out into those organizations and they learn from the administration level executive teams. Um, and so we've taken some pictures and students get tours. And um, like I said, we meet in boardrooms and we get to hear from a wide variety of the, um, you know, the top dogs uh, talking about, you know, how they lead and direct their organizations. And so it's usually a, a crowd favorite. And not only because you um, get to learn a lot about, in this case, it's um, health policy and health care reform, which is, of course, with the, you know, Currently, where we're at a couple of days are from election. We're hearing a lot about healthcare reform, but not only that, but students get to um, imagine a day in the life and some what it might be like to work in some of these places. So Emily's nodding her head a little bit. I know it was good for her um, and a lot of her students um, that she went through this class with. But then the third benefit is you really get to know each other pretty well. So the students, um, we get, you know, they get to spend a lot of time together and kind of recognize each other as we're in this together um, kind of mentality. And so they do um, get to make a lot of great friendships during this class as well. So here's a course list, and this I just listed uh, to show you a little bit of an idea of how broad our program is. And so, so as I mentioned, you know, we're looking for to build the leaders in healthcare organizations. I want to back up and say that sometimes that's also a clinical person. So we do have some students that study health services leadership that are also interested in being a physical therapist or also interested in being a physician. And so they might um, tackle both majors so that they will plan on medical school or plan on PT school, but then also recognize that at some point in their career, they wanna be on the leadership side of things. And so they will take both programs, which you can very easily do at Simpson. You can definitely double major, uh, major two minors. Uh, we've seen two majors, two minors. We've seen it all um, on top of being an athlete or you know, in debate and, and students are very busy. But the idea here is that we show you that how broad the classes are. So there's intro classes that just kind of teach you about the health system in America, all the way to healthcare ethics. Um, to um, improving quality in health in healthcare, to financial management, to looking at health all the way from um, prenatal to end of life. Um, we're looking at epidemiology, which will be um, very interesting when we teach that in the fall because of the pandemic. <laughs> There'll be a lot to teach about there as well. Um, and then a capstone. And so the capstone in the health services leadership program is similar to what is in health and exercise and, um, science that um, in our program, everyone is required to do an internship but the internship is supported. So that we start talking about it, you know, pretty much as soon as you decide you wanna study in HSL, we start talking about what are your interests. And after they take that course where we do all the traveling, students generally are much more aware of their interests. And so we begin to make connections out in the field with different, um, you know, sometimes it's those industry partners like I showed you on the previous slide. And sometimes it's, you know, it's just a cold call. We just reach out and say, I have a student here with this interest and, and they'd really like to come and, um, be a part of your organization and we just start building internship um, projects and so that's down here at the the capstone level what i'll show you next is just a list of internship sites so you have a better idea where students can can get that um, capstone experience so some of these these sites will be similar to what um, nikki and katie showed on their lists because obviously we're gonna need clinical people and we're gonna need support staff and so um, the administrative side is um, one that like i mentioned we see a lot of students that are interested in being in leadership. So um, had students do internships at Unity Point in Des Moines, um, Mercy, not only the big Mercy in Des Moines, the big health system, but also smaller hospitals in smaller towns um, that have been acquired by Mercy. And so students will have spent time there too. Um, some small hospitals like Audubon County Memorial Hospital, Decatur County Hospital, where students did a lot of things. And they got to do a lot of learning because of that small nature. Like I mentioned, you wear a lot of hats when you work in a small hospital. So they learned um, quite a bit there. Two professional associations like Iowa Healthcare Association, to Iowa Hospital Association, to um, senior living facilities, uh, assisted care, memory care, um, continuous care retirement centers. So all the way, as Katie had mentioned, from you know, you don't need much assistance at all to you know, memory care where um, there's a lot of 24-7 care that's given. 
Um, Child Serve in Johnson has hosted three of our students. Um, that's been a great internship site. I think also for the health and exercise science students, some of them spent some time there as well. We've had students do internships and very interested in behavioral health. And so uh, Prelude was a host site as well. Um, and the American Lung Association. Um, Central Iowa ACES 360, that's a partnership for lots of different providers and um, nonprofit industry trying to partner against, partner together to um, like child abuse prevention, um, like trying to do trauma informed care, trying to do early assessment of um, negative um, things like uh, child abuse or um, incarcerated parents and trying to see how that has an, out, an outcome on their health later. And so they're trying to do research and um, advocacy on behalf of lots of organizations um, and the list goes on. So a wide variety of internships. And I, and I share that because it does usually help people who might be thinking about healthcare recognize that there's so many ways that you can be a part of um, the helping profession. Sometimes it's clinical and sometimes it's otherwise. So we try to show how um, broad that is with our list of internships. I also put some, um, some stats on here um, just to sort of validate why Simpson believes it's important to offer such a wide variety of programs that can help students um, work in healthcare. So just like why we partnered together for this call was understanding that you know, we need clinical providers, we need research, we need health IT, we need administration, but it's such a booming field. And so I applaud you for being interested in studying in healthcare. And there are many ways that you um, can do that. And so we would love to have you here at Simpson and spend some time with all of us having conversations about where you might um, bring your time and talents to the, um, to the situation here. So some stats, some stats on here, just um, some I'd like to show of the 30 occupations projected to grow the most between 2012 and 2020, 14 are related to healthcare. So that's like good 50% of the jobs that are growing the most are related to healthcare. So you um, should feel good about your ability to find a job after graduation. And just another quote to be shared. Lots of opportunity, very diverse, as I've mentioned, and that um, we hoped that by giving you a broad education and then also supporting these leadership skills that you'll be able to advance quickly in your career path. All right, Emily, would you mind um, talking a little bit about your experience in HSL and maybe about what you did this summer and anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, so kind of as JC mentioned, when I originally came to Simpson, I knew that I wanted to be in the healthcare field, but I wasn't a super big fan of the hands-on, hands-on care. So when I, during my visit and during my SOAR day, I had the opportunity to meet JC and learn a little bit more about the program. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be perfect for me. This is exactly what I'm interested in. And so I signed up for her intro 110 class and I ended up loving it. And Sometimes as we get going through the classes, you start to realize that there are so many opportunities in this field. It's almost mind blowing because there's so many different paths that you can take. So one great experience was our May term course that she mentioned with all the pictures where we got to go and visit a bunch of different healthcare organizations. So we would all load up in a van every morning super early and we <laughs> drive to all these places. And it was just super fun because we got to bond as a as a class and as a program. And then we also got to spend time with JC. And another thing is that, um, you know, if I wouldn't have picked Simpson and I wouldn't have picked this program, I wouldn't have had a lot of the opportunities that I did. Um, I got to meet a lot of great people. And I also had the opportunity to have an internship this last summer with one of our industry partners. So I had an internship with, um, LCS in one of their senior living communities in Cedar Rapids. And so I spent all summer in the midst, midst of COVID in, uh, in their senior living community, rotating throughout all the different departments. And it was just a fantastic experience. And I'm about to graduate out of the program this year, and I would not have changed a single thing. Tell them where you lived this summer, Emily. I lived in the community, actually. So I lived in one of the apartments there in the, in the community. So I just got to walk down the hallway to work every morning. And so it was fun being around it pretty much 24 seven. And that was an LCS um, organization. So that was, that's pretty much what we mean. Like these partners of ours are looking for good help and why not be a part of building a program that helps develop the good help. And so Emily is also 
um, studies, her minor is um, data analytics. Is that the right title? And so she's going to be quite a catch someday very soon. And so we're excited for your future and she'll do another internship before she graduates. So we'll be able to add on to what she learned from um, her summer experience, which I don't know if you could learn more than <laughs> living in a senior living facility during COVID. I don't know if it's possible, but I'm sure that you will. Emily, thanks for sharing. And right here, I just one last thing, just as um, Health and Exercise Science wrote down, here's our um, social media platform names as well. So you can write those down. Amy, maybe while you're loading your slides, I will just explain Mayterm because we've alluded to that a couple of times, sure. but you sure. may That's not be familiar with that. Um, so we have a fall and a, a spring term at Simpson, just a typical semester. And then in May, students have the opportunity to take one course, um, which is the only course that they focus on for three weeks at a time. And so a lot of students will use that opportunity to travel. Um, we have domestic trips as well as trips abroad in a typical year, so post pandemic and pre pandemic. And they're going all across the globe. Um, one course that we did in our department um, was a physical activity recreational based trip to evaluate physical activity in New Zealand compared to the United States. Um, but there's trips going everywhere regularly. The biology department regularly has trips. Um, a couple of them are skydiving or scuba diving related, not mm -hmm. skydiving. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of travel, which is something that Simpson does really well. And then we have on-campus classes as well. So Dr. Downey referred to hers um, where they travel to a lot of different internship sites. And we have a similar course that Nikki teaches in our major that allows students to be able to go and explore exercise in a variety of different settings. So working with traumatic brain injury patients, we go boxing with Parkinson's patients. Mm -hmm. um, students actually get a chance to go and visit an exercise in cardiac rehab lab in Des Moines to be able to see what exercise um, cardiac rehab actually looks like as a potential job as well. Um, and Dr. Dolan's going to be teaching of course this may on the study of aids so um yeah it's a great opportunity it's a really fun time um and as a student myself it, it was fun to be able to have your finals done before the rest of your peers did at other institutions mm -hmm. and then while the weather is nice you're just working on one course each day for those three weeks so now we'll get to hear more about biology and i will add um while she's loading that that as she mentioned we box with parkinson's patients and i think you'd be quite surprised our very fit athletes um, tend to get schooled a little bit by some of those Parkinson's patients. So it's kind of fun. They go into it thinking like, ah, this will be cake. And, uh, and the, the older population loves to challenge them. So, so it's been quite fun. They come out pretty sweaty. So it's kind of fun. So I am um, Professor Amy Doling, and I have been at Simpson since 2002. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the department, and then I'm going to let... Um, Allison Rose uh, tell you about herself. So we have um, six people in the biology department uh, currently, myself. I teach microbiology, immunology, second semester, um, freshman biology, um, a course on HIV and AIDS that I teach most May terms and biochemistry seminar and a couple of other classes here and there. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my pointer. I'm hoping that you can, but this is Dr. Meyer, um, and he is our entomologist. So he studies bugs. He also um, teaches all of our classes about plants and a couple of other environmental science classes. This is Professor Ashwati Samaranian, and she is our geneticist. So she teaches genetics, cell biology, as well as second semester um, biology with me. And she is extremely multidisciplinary. So she teaches sometimes about art, um, and Katie can correct me if I'm wrong, but teaching an honors class, maybe this coming year or yes, this coming year. Okay. I've lost track. I'm currently teaching it. Environmental science and art. Perfect. She is, we have very few artists in the biology department. I think she's the only one. This is, um, Professor Jackie Brittingham and she's our developmental biologist and physiologist, um, and so she teaches first semester um, biology, freshman biology, developmental biology on an every other year basis, uh, human physiology, um, and some May term classes. This is Professor Ryan Remeyer. He is our mammologist. So he teaches pretty much all of our animal behavioral classes as well as our first year, um, first semester um, biology course. And this is um, Tessa Hartman Miller. She is a visiting professor and is our anatomist. 
So in our major, we have two, or in our department, I should say, we have two majors. Um, biology is the first major and environmental science is the second major. It's not on this slide because I guess it's not related to healthcare, but we do have an environmental science um, major. We also have a um, agreement with Allen College for a nursing program. So that includes either three or four years at Simpson. It depends on the student and uh, what he or she um, wants to do. And then 15 months at Allen College. Um, we also co-sponsor a neuroscience major with the psychology department. And um, we have a biochemistry major, which is administered out of our chemistry department, but is almost half of the major is biology classes. And Allison will tell you about that. Um, she's both neuroscience and biochemistry. So um, we have students uh, graduate with biology uh, degrees or neuroscience degrees to go on to do a variety of things, um, medical school, um, both in MD and DO programs, um, pharmacy school, dental school, um, veterinary school, nursing, occupational therapy, physical therapy, physician assistant. I think I've probably caught most of them. And then some of our students go on to do um, PhDs. And actually we're finding that more of them are doing that, which we love. So these are some of the schools that our students have um, matriculated into in the last five or eight years. We do have a pre-health club for anyone interested in the field of public health. Um, and we have quite a big group. I, I can't tell you exactly how many of our students participate, but a large majority of the biology and neuroscience majors. And maybe Allison can tell you a little bit more about that. We also are very big on internships. Um, we've been a little bit stilted recently because of COVID as has everyone else. But um, these are a list, I'm not gonna read them to you, of several places that um, we've actually had several students probably attend most of these places. Um, we have three veterinary clinics in town and all of them, but in particular two of them have been wonderful about taking our students. Sometimes our students will work there for years before they go into um, vet school. Um, Mercy Clinic uh, has a, we have a agreement with Mercy Clinic um, for both physical therapy and um, pre-med um, internships. The Science Center of Iowa and the zoo have been fairly popular uh, internships. And we have lots of students that go off and do other ones too. I don't see any um, dental offices here, but we do also have students that go on to do dental internships as well as optometry. And that would be another um, field that I missed. So I can't talk much about this because as my colleagues know, I like barely like to travel within the country. So I don't even, I definitely don't like to travel out of the country, but I am in the minority in my department in this, uh, in this respect. So um, our department has offered several May term uh, study abroad opportunities. Um, and while we're not having May term this year, hopefully next year we'll have some opportunities also coming out of biology. I stay on campus and teach um, my class about uh, HIV and AIDS, and it's absolutely one of my favorite classes um, that I teach. Um, we have some undergraduate research in the summer. I will tell you that more of our students or most of our students will go off campus and do um, undergraduate research experiences at larger schools. Um, sometimes younger students will stay on campus and do um, one of these maybe after their freshman or sophomore year and then go on to a bigger school. But we do have the Bryan Summer Research Program, uh, which is in collaboration with math. We have the Simpson College Ecological Research Program with um, Dr. Remeyer and Dr. Meyer, and also a DNA nanotechnology group, which is mostly run through our chemistry department, but also a little bit with computer science. We did not have a summer program last summer, again, because of COVID. I'm hoping we're able to have one this year, however. Um, these are some uh, 2019 locations for summer research. Again, 2020 was um, is a little bit hard to report. We did have some students that did um, virtual internships, but I, I don't have a, um, a up-to-date list of them. 
I will also say that our faculty, myself included in 2017, sometimes will do um, 10 week uh, research opportunities at the University of Iowa. So in that case, a faculty member and a student will actually move to Iowa City um, for 10 weeks and work in one of the labs there. And that was a wonderful experience um, that I hope to repeat, I think for both me and the student. Um, these are just some pictures of some of our symposium that we've had uh, on campus. Uh, and we, uh, in the biology department, are lucky in that we have some student travel stipends. Not every department has that. Um, so that helps with getting our students traveling. And I will take any questions, but first I'm going to introduce Allison Rose and ask her to tell you a little bit about her. Yeah, I'm Allison Rose. I'm a senior here. And as Dr. Doling mentioned, I'm a biochemistry and neuroscience double major. And then I play volleyball here. So as they mentioned earlier, it's pretty like manageable to play a sport and be a double major or like I work at Mercy in downtown Des Moines. So I also am employed and at Simpson, they just make those opportunities possible. Um, just as Dolan was going through her PowerPoint, I was able to think of a couple more things. I have studied abroad twice. I, after my freshman and sophomore year, I studied abroad. I've had two different internships. I went to Oklahoma State and then I interned at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And so both of those were thanks to Simpson and that's me. Allison, do you wanna share your big news? Yeah, I forgot to do that as well. So my, I am going to medical school after um, college. I got accepted. And I will say, I think she's the one too that we've all had in class now. Um, mm. So we're very lucky. Um, so yes, so congratulations to Allison. But any questions for us? Otherwise, um, of course, you're always welcome to, to put it in the chat for us. Um, but We'll kind of finish up with some admissions talk if no one has any questions. Well, I just want to thank everyone um, that presented tonight, and um, I know they'll stay on. I would love um, if you have questions, feel free to type those in the chat box um, and we can get those answered. I'm just going to talk briefly just some admissions information. I know tonight we have some underclassmen joining us, I believe um, seniors and even transfer students. So I'm going to try to touch a little bit of everything for everyone. Um, many of you already know a lot about Simpson, and obviously you learned a lot about um, Simpson tonight. But just to give you a quick little rundown, um, I'm sure all of you are familiar that we are located in Indianola, Iowa. We're only 12 miles south of Des Moines, and that's probably, I think, one of the biggest advantages we have as a college is being that close to a large city. Definitely open, opens our students up to a lot of opportunities job-wise. You heard a lot about the internships and work experiences tonight. And um, it's something we always push. Um, I know all the professors here could definitely even attest to a lot of our students come in still undecided, or maybe they have an idea of what they want to major in, but they're not sure which direction they want to take it. And that's one thing I, as an alum at Simpson, I felt Simpson does a great job of helping students just experience different aspects of their major, finding out what direction they want to go, whether, um, you know, doing internships, doing those research opportunities. And that really kind of shapes um, what direction. We do have over 80 majors and minors at Simpson, so we have a lot of opportunities. Um, 12 to one student to faculty ratio. So we really believe on that one-on-one -on -one, um, connection from your professors. Uh, I remember, you know, outside of class, I could always um, go knock on a professor's door and they were available. And you don't get that at every school. And that's one thing I really enjoyed about my experience at Simpson, just knowing that I had professors that knew my first name, that knew me, that um, when I went and asked them questions, they were available. So I think um, those are some things you, you obviously probably got from tonight's presentation, just knowing that the professors know their students. And um, that was really the learning experience I was looking for. Um, from the admissions office, obviously we know that college can be expensive. Um, as you might see here, 100% of our full-time students receive financial aid. I think as an institution, our goal is hopefully we can make it affordable for students and families. So at the end of the day, when you start making those college decisions, you can make those decisions based on what major you like best, what campus you like best. You can make it based on those factors and not have to base it on the money 
Um, so we try to do a great job. We offer a lot of great um, competitive academic scholarships, need-based, merit-based scholarships to really help lower that cost of um, college down. Um, so what should you do next? As I mentioned, I know we have a lot of um, different age ranges on the call tonight. Um, for those underclassmen, sophomores, juniors that are still just kind of beginning that um, college search, jump on a lot of these Zoom things. We offer a lot of them here at Simpson, but I know a lot of colleges do. Um, so take advantage, do your research. Uh, we would love every student to come visit Simpson. We'd love every student to end up at Simpson. But I always encourage students to make some visits at the colleges you're interested in because that's really the best way you're going to find out what you're looking for in a college. Um, at Simpson, we like to do individual visits. And when you come for a visit, we'll say you up with a faculty member. Um, you can talk with one of the professors you heard from tonight. Or maybe if you're interested in an activity like athletics or music or theater, we'll sit you down with that department. Um, talk, reaching out to other students, but also touring campus, you know, getting a chance to see campus. Um, right now, it's a beautiful time of year to come visit. Um, so I encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, for seniors, uh, if application is open right now, it's free to apply. Um, once you apply, you're going to have your high school transcript sent and your ACT or SAT scores. If you have not taken the standardized test scores, um, especially sophomores and juniors, when you start taking those, I encourage you to take it more than once. But we also have a test optional um, option available for students. Uh, you have over a 3.0 grade point average and you're interested in applying to Simpson, and maybe you don't think your test scores accurately portray the type of student you are, you can apply test optional and our admissions committee will take a look at your transcripts, um, take a look at the curriculum you've taken, all the activities. We're gonna um, really kind of just try to learn more about you. Um, also check out different fall events that we offer here, but just events in general. We do a lot of in-person campus events, plus some of these Zoom opportunities. So take advantage of those. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention, I know there might be some questions here is, um, connect with us on social media. You know, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Um, YouTube, hashtag one Simpson. That's really the best avenue to find out your most up-to-date information about Simpson College. Um, so I think that's a great opportunity to do that. Um, but as I said, we'd love all of you to come to campus if you get a chance. Uh, was there any questions that anyone had that I could answer or even any of the professors answer? don't see anything. I do see that they're thinking dance and soccer for some extracurricular. So that's awesome. Um, Excellent. And we're, you know, that's a pretty, um, you know, get a, a common thing here. So we're very much used to, as Allison mentioned, you know, used to working with athletes and, in, in, you know, theater, music, whatever, um, and kind of balancing your, your extracurriculars along with your major and internships and employment and all of that. So that's, a pretty normal thing for us and, and we, we love it. Uh, I think we keep those students busy and, and we know that we study more when we're busy. So, um, and I love to hear volunteering as well. So you'll all, a lot of you will need to get patient contact hours. And so again, we help kind of collaborate with, uh, you know, area hospitals or clinics or whatever um, to try to help with that as well. So anything uh, else? I don't see. think I see any more questions, Nikki. Um, okay. Well, yeah, again, you want to so much. wrap it up or? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, I just want to, you know, first of all, tell everyone thanks for joining us tonight. I know if you have any questions at all, reach out to any of us here at Simpson. Uh, we can get those answered. Um, and I appreciate everyone joining us. Anything else, Nikki? No, I think that's awesome. I, I you know, again, a couple of us can stay on if anybody wants to, to chat with us, but. Again, I appreciate you giving up some of your Sunday night. So we hope to see you on campus soon. Take care.